Thanks, go with it. Well, that way. Yeah, I guess. Right. Hmm? I just thought of it. Well, we don't discuss it when it's up in the air. <laughs> I need to flip that up. This is all horse. Can you hold it up while I flip it? <laughs> going on guys in today's video we're going to be building a transom for this boat i haven't really made a transom specific video in a while so i'm going to try to be a little thorough with this one so i hope it isn't too boring for some of you guys that uh know how to do a transom obviously the first thing you need to do is assess your transom i mean it's pretty easy to tell if you can take a screwdriver and push into the wood of your transom that's that soft it needs to be replaced so step two, you're gonna to have to take the transom out, the old transom, if there is one there. I would recommend trying to keep it intact so you can just use the old transom as your template for your new transom. But if it just crumbles to pieces like the, this boat's did, it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna show you how to deal with that. Uh, as far as taking the transom out, the bigger the boat is, usually when you get to 14 foot boats, uh, you're gonna have a transom brace. At least a lot of the ones I've came across will have a brace that goes from like the transom to the bottom of the boat. You don't necessarily have to take that out if your end caps are able to pop off. Uh, your end caps on the corners of the back of the boat, a lot of times uh, they're riveted on or bolted on. If you can take those out, a lot of times you can get the transom out this way. Um, but like on, in this boat's case, it's the caps are welded on and we don't want to go through that much trouble. So what I went ahead and done is I took that bracket off and the transom came down to the bottom of the boat and pulled it out. Like it came out in like 10,000 pieces because this one was severely gone. But uh, that, that's your couple, couple ways to do it. Uh, it kind of sucks taking that brace out because we're gonna have to put it back in. Uh, I'm going to bolt it in uh, if you are capable of riveting it in, you can do that. You can, I guess you could use closed rivets. Uh, I'm not sure that I would really trust the seal on that. If you use closed, just regular, you know, hand rivets, I would definitely make sure you uh, silicone and probably epoxy the crap out of it just to, to be sure. I don't know how well those things hold up. Somebody can let me know in the comments if it's totally fine to use closed rivets on a brace like that. Uh, but we're going to be just using round headed bolts. All right, so we've already got the transom out of this boat. It's fairly clean, but we do not have a transom to make a template out of, so we'll have to make our own. And I'm going to show you guys what I am doing to, uh, to solve this problem. Now, like I said earlier, these are your end caps that most boats have. As you can see, this one is welded on all the way around, and I had to take the brace off, which went from here to the transom. That's not that big of a deal. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge here in a little bit when we get to putting that back in. But since we do not have a transom, a lot of boats will kick up a little bit. Like these, these end caps are a little bit higher than the actual transom, and you don't have to add that. You just need one straight run all the way across that comes up to flush with this piece of aluminum on your boat. And also the transom doesn't have to be tight fitting from side to side and you want a little gap on each side which you can see where this transom ended almost an inch from each side i just took a tape measure and just tried to pull a measurement and i came up with like 52 inches for this particular boat and that's what i'm going to work with now make a template basically just get you a piece of cardboard like i have here cut it to the length you need and basically we're just going to kind of put it flush and with this boat 
I mean, we don't have any kind of curves or anything. It's just basically one, you know, straight angle. We're just gonna trace that out on each side and then cut our angle out and then figure out how wide our transom needs to be. And then we'll cut that on this piece of cardboard and then that cardboard will be a template. Of course, we'll test fit it and make sure everything's working right and be able to trim it. It's a lot easier to trim that cardboard and make sure that's right before we uh, cut a piece of wood out and just guess. So let's go ahead and get this template ready. Now we want to go ahead and test fit it, make sure we got good clearance all the way around. Alright, that looks pretty good. It might be a little tight, but once we get our wood cut out and we get the two pieces together, we'll test fit it before we put the epoxy on there. That way we can make any kind of cuts or little minor adjustments. But uh, that template looks like it's gonna work pretty good. Hi, right, you ain't got an existing transom to figure out how wide your transom wood needs to be. You take a tape measure and just put under here. And you see we are just shy of one and a half and really it needs to be a little bit less than that because we're on the outside of this piece of aluminum. This aluminum is almost a 16th thick. So another way you could do it is just kind of eyeball it right here. So you're looking at probably, I mean, you want it to be fairly tight. You want it to just be flopping around in there, but I mean, you don't want to have to kill yourself. So we're going to add a little bit of thickness with the epoxy. So I'm going to say like one and a quarter is what we need to be at. So what's that, a five eighths, I think? two five-eighths boards put together. And of course, it's some crap I don't have, so we're going to have to make a trip to Lowe's. Right, I was afraid that this was going to be too wide. I couldn't find the exact width I needed at Lowe's in exterior grade. So I got this, and it was just a hair bigger than 5 eighths. I put them together, and you see me cut them. And then I just used some wood screws to hold them together. And it wasn't wanting to fit up under here, mainly right here where it's welded. It's kind of pinched in. Now, started just notching it just a little bit to clear that but i end up just going ahead and notching that whole section out i ran my skill saw down there and then just took a chisel and chiseled it out and now i'm going to test fit it make sure it works all right i measured it down and i got these holes right here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I mean, my wood is right up against this now. I mean, it's, it's flush. You can kind of see it right there. So we got it notched out. We got it to the width we need. Now we can take it out and start layering it with some fiberglass resin. Before I coat this thing, I'm going to take these screws back out and put some wood glue between them.
All right, next morning, I'll let that sit for right at 24 hours with the glue on it. Went ahead and pulled those screws out. The screws didn't go all the way through, by the way. They're just enough to, just trying to hold the two pieces together pretty tight. Let that glue set up. And now I'm going to hit it with a, like 120 grit sandpaper just to, on the edges, make sure ain't nothing rough or flaky, anything like that. And we'll go ahead and put some resin on it. All right, for coating these transoms, what I like to use is this Bondo fiberglass resin. It's kind of like a two-part uh, deal. It has your, your resin in here and then the hardener. I think you do one ounce of resin and 10 drops of the, your hardener. I'm gonna start with four ounces, so that'd be like 40 drops of the hardener. You don't have a lot of working time with this is the one downfall, but it hardens up really quick, so that's a good thing. Is it the best stuff to use? I, I'm not exactly sure, probably not the best stuff. But for price, I think it's a pretty good option. It does say waterproof formula for repairing, resurfacing, or rebuilding metal, wood, fiberglass, or masonry surfaces. Uh, you could go out and buy some marine epoxy, but like the two-part stuff, that stuff is super, super expensive. And if you do use that, I'd like to point out that it's going to really put a thick layer of <laughs> coating on your transom. So if you're going to go that route, make sure you cut your transom a little bit uh, narrower or you know the, your width wise or you're going to have trouble getting it in i've ran into that problem with the very first boat transom i replaced this stuff is like 20 bucks for this uh, you could do like glove it or coat it which i mean coat it is cheaper uh, than glove it but it's still twice the price of this bondo stuff and you can find this anywhere at walmart uh, AutoZone, what have you i'm just gonna go ahead and mix this stuff up and I'm gonna use just a, one of them throwaway chip brushes to coat it on one side. I'll do a good coat on each side and all the edges and call that good. Uh, like I said, if you build it up too much, you're gonna have a problem getting it into the, the boat. So one good coating on all sides and then we'll put a paint job on it too. So we got a, a double layer of protection. All right, let's get to coating. All right, in case you're wondering, working time on this stuff says eight to 12 minutes. So you do kind of have to not piddle forward around with it. And cure time is two hours. And that's at 75 degrees. It's not 75 degrees here right now. But like I said, I don't have time to do the second coat or the, the bottom of it. Four ounces was almost perfect amount to do this transom. This transom is roughly 52 inches by like 11 and a half because I had to trim it so to make it fit. Let's uh hurry up and wait, finish it tomorrow. Went ahead and put a coat of resin on the back side of the transom. And what I'm gonna do now is just hit it real quick with a uh, sander, just, just kind of knock any burrs off. And probably do that all the way around and then come back to the back, clean it up, and we'll go ahead and put a coat of paint on the back. I went ahead and cleaned up the back of the boat where the transom goes real good with a flap disc and a the little mouse sander. And then I went ahead and put a coat of the paint on it. Not that necessarily it needs to be between the transom and that, like a coating. I just wanted to do it because it'll make it a lot easier to paint right now versus, you know, when the transom's in there. So waiting on this paint to dry and we can start throwing this thing in. All right, for hardware, I'm using stainless steel. Now there's a little bit of discrepancy about what hardware to use. Now, obviously you don't wanna use like regular steel because it's gonna rust on you. And the 
thing that some people say about stainless using stainless is stainless can react with aluminum a lot of stuff reacts with aluminum so if you just put it in here over time you know it could start to corrode where the aluminum is touching the stainless the bolts i mean we have a couple things going on for us uh, we have it painted so that's one layer of protection we're also going to go with some silicone that's going to add a layer of protection where you're not exactly having stainless on aluminum if you're really really worried about it you can get you some neoprene washers and put on your bolts for an extra added layer of protection uh, i might go ahead and do it I, I went ahead and picked up some just for the sake of telling you guys about it because i've had some people comment about how stainless steel will corrode aluminum and it will you know you look it up and people will say but if you look into it enough they also say that stainless steel is the best hardware to use on aluminum boats obviously if you didn't want it to corrode at all you had to use aluminum but aluminum just doesn't have the strength as far as our silicone this is dow seal rtv sealant 732 it's clear basically i mean any kind of rtv silicone will work use black white you know whatever you want to use i don't think that is that big of a deal but basically we're just going to squirt some in the hole and get a little bit of dollop i like to use clear because a lot of this is going to push out and it's also going to push some out on the inside where i'm just going to take my finger and kind of wipe it around the hole And for the inside, I'm just going with like a, it's not exactly a fender washer, it's a little smaller. And then a nylon lock nut. Go ahead and tighten it up. All right, now that we got these two bottom ones holding us pretty tight and we got these grips up here holding this tight up top. Everything should be pretty flush all around. And go ahead and drill out the rest of my holes through the transom. Now these center ones are a little bit bigger. And this boat had like an outside transom, which I'm going to do. I'm not done with it yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill those holes out too. These I just did were a quarter inch and these are five sixteenths. I don't know why, it's just how it was. So I'm going back the way they had it. Now we can go ahead and fill up the outside ones and we're gonna wait till I get this outside transom to put the rest of these in. I'll have to drill, I'll put this piece up clamp it and then drill from this side. That's why I went ahead and drilled these out so I can I know where it needs to drill through. All right, let's bolt these up. Camera went dead on me, so I didn't get to film this, but I put my brace in. I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. I just took my drill and a little wire brush, cleaned it up real good. And as you see, I put some round headed quarter inch bolts in with washers. I gooped it up pretty good with RTV silicone then pushed it through, gooped it up even more on this side and then put my transom brace down on it, fender washers, lock nuts, tightened it up. And I just kind of cinched it up pretty good while I'm letting that silicone kind of dry up. I mean, it's not that hard of a deal. Like I said, the best way to put that back in is probably go ahead and buck some rivets I don't have a bucking gun. It's impossible to get this by yourself with a hammer and do it that way. Like I said earlier in the video, you can use closed rivets. Let me know. With just with this transom, and you know, it's got a lot of flex. You want to have some movement right here in this stuff. I just don't know if I would trust doing closed rivets. If you've done it before and it worked out for you, let me know. It's good information to put out there. But I think this is a good option anyways. So I know them bolts are a little bit long. I'll snip them off. All right, we're just waiting on this outer transom to dry up. And I can put it on. All right, I just kind of got these bolts pushed through. But we'll go ahead and take these bolts out, put that outer transom on, drill the holes out from this way, and uh, get this thing wrapped up. We got our little outside transom in place. Got it centered in the boat and clamped down. And we're going to go ahead and drill our pre-drill holes through the main transom as guides through this side. out 
away. We got it all buttoned up, bolted in and tight. What I like to do is just take a little bit of silicone and just squirt a little, like a pea size mount out or whatever. And I just go over every bolt on the outside, especially everything that's below the water line. And I also went ahead and ran a bead of silicone all the way around this outside part of the transom and the top too. That way you don't have water just like sitting on there and getting in that wood. And I went ahead and also run a bead right here in this crack where I had to notch out the wood part of the transom and make it fit. And of course, you know, like I said, when I, you push the bolts through, you have a little bit come out and I kind of smear it around. I'll go through and look at all of them. If it looks like I can see a little little gap or something, I go ahead and smear some silicone on that too. Just trying to make sure it's 100% watertight. Now all we gotta do is wait for all our silicone to dry and we can put a coat of paint on it. All right, stick a fork in this transom because it is done other than the paint. I'm just going to wait until I paint the inside of the boat to, to knock it out at the same time. I think I mentioned that I use exterior grade plywood in this. Now, that is what I would go with. You know, that's what I would recommend. You could use just regular plywood if you want to, non-exterior grade, but you want to make sure that you do coat it with something. Uh, that way it'll last a little bit longer. Not a huge amount, you know, price-wise between exterior grade and regular, so... You know, I, I would suggest spend the extra money and get exterior grade. Plus, I mean, if your transom isn't as wide, if it's under 48 inches, I know Lowe's has like half sheets. So you might be able to save a little bit of money instead of getting a whole sheet of plywood because you don't need a whole sheet. But like this one was 52 inches, so I had to get a whole sheet to do this. One. And obviously, you know, any kind of wood transom isn't the best way to replace a transom. The best way is to go with an aluminum transom. Uh, but that is not as readily available to a lot of people and it will probably be costly if you have to order it uh, If you got a scrap yard nearby, that's a good source If you're trying to get the exact same width as the previous transom It might be a little tough finding exactly what you need the scrap yard But I might explore that option on the next boat I do that needs a transom just to give you guys a different way of, of doing it and maybe a cost to it too uh, you could also, and there's other things you could use for a transom too, like Kusa board. Um, I don't have that anywhere around me that I could just go pick up. And you're not going to spend the money to have a 4 by 8 sheet of Kusa board shipped to your house. But, I mean, that is, you know, something that would last longer than plywood. But I think the way I've done this transom, it is going to last a very, very long time. Everything is completely sealed up. I ain't going to say that water cannot get to it, but... I took all the steps that I could, I think, uh, to make sure that this transom is going to be pretty watertight and last a very long time. Doing the transom isn't hard. I mean, it's a lot of waiting time. You know, wait on the resin to cure, epoxy to cure, then you gotta wait on your silicone to cure. It's a, it's a lot of, of waiting around, so it's not like something you can really just knock out in one day. It's gonna take you a few days, but you're actual work time isn't that long if that makes any sense that's going to do it for this video up next we're going to be dealing with the the inside of this boat uh, we'll go ahead and put some glove it on all the spots that were fixed the welds and some of these uh, shady looking rivets in this boat and also we'll go ahead and probably go ahead and, and do the foam too all right i appreciate you guys watching i'll see you on the next one